Um, we'll just talk about the 980. This is the ventilator you're going to be using predominantly here in the NICU. Um, and the mode of ventilation that you're going to be using is called ACDC Plus. So it's a volume controlled mode, um, but also assisted. Um, so we'll just go through the basic settings down here. Um, and Danielle can help me with kind of, as well as Reese can help me with the normal values that we kind of like to set. So yeah. first thing we're going to set, or actually, let me take a step back. When we're setting up this ventilator with a baby, we want to ventilate them at six mils per kilogram. That is a lung protective strategy. So just to make it easy on all of us involved, we're just going to input the baby's weight up here. So we're just going to say they're two kilograms. So two times six is how we're going to get a tidal volume of 12 milliliters. And it's going to show you down here that they're being ventilated at six mils per kilogram. If I were to adjust this, you can see it adjust being changed right here. So if we were to, went to 14 mils, they'd be ventilated at seven mils per kilogram. And we'll just go back to that 12. And that's where I like to stay. Um, and then we'll set our respiratory rate. So generally anywhere between 40 and 60. Um, our inspiratory time, that's, it kind of depends on the term of the baby. Uh, but generally speaking, we'll start anywhere from 0.3 to 0.5. Yeah. Normally 0.35. 0.35, okay, <laughs> there we go. And then our FiO2, how much oxygen the baby is receiving. And then our peak level, which are you familiar, is everyone familiar with peak? Just that positive and expiratory pressure. It's like splinting pressure, keep things open on exhalation. Uh, we'll typically start around six. And then we have our alarms, which I will delve into just a little bit and we can touch on it more once we start ventilating our little baby here. <laughs> um, so with alarms, we do our best to try and match or I'm sorry, that's in the apnea. So in our alarms, we have our high peak pressure. So you're gonna get high peak pressure typically whenever there's some sort of obstruction or an, a kink maybe in the circuit or even in the ET tube. Our uh, high respiratory rate, we'll set about like 20 to 30 above what we've actually set down here. Um, our high minute ventilation, so just how many, or the volume they're taking in e on each breath. And then we'll have, um, Right, just other values. <laughs> and then we'll go into apnea. So our apnea, we try and match, um, sorry, it's not in volume. So that's actually a good example. So our apnea, we try and match it to um, everything we've set down here. So we're gonna go AC, BC. And the, reason, the main difference between BC and BC plus is in plus, the baby can generate their own flow rate. Whereas if it's in DC, you set the flow rate. The baby cannot manipulate that. So if they want a really quick breath, they can take that in. If they want a slow breath, they can do that as well. So I'm just gonna set this to match what we have down here. Uh, so again, there is our apnea, but apnea really won't come much into play because we're not uh, putting the babies on a CPAP, like a wean in a sense. So. Apnea, we don't really need to touch too terribly much on that. Um, Just a couple other things on the alarm. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so most often on this, your peak pressure is going to go off, say maybe your baby's coughing, maybe they're crying. Um, so the peak pressure goes off often. Additionally, if we have a lot of condensation in, the, in this, um, it can cause a peak pressure as well. So we're going to drain this down away from the baby, so we're not going down the ET tube, right? We want to flush away from the baby down here. Generally, once this is trained, if that's what the cause, you're going to see that alarm go away. Another, sorry, yep. to interject. Another alarm you're going to see a lot is this low minute ventilation. That being because we have an uncuffed ET tube. Mm -hmm. So air is going to escape around that tube. So I generally do not like to turn off any alarms. Um, so it, it may occur as kind of a nuisance alarm. But just so you're aware, that's most likely the reason it's happening. But you always want to troubleshoot by, of course, assessing your baby in the ventilator. We do have a tool, leak, leak compensation, we can put on. So if that's something you can just ask, like, oh, is the leak compensation on? Maybe it is already on. Maybe they didn't consider trying that. So that's something to consider. Additionally, over here, a lot of times we get calls like, it's alarming. You know, maybe you're not sure what's alarming. If we come over, and let's pop that one on so we can have the alarms pop up. Um, it'll show us all the previous alarms that have gone off, so then we can troubleshoot. So I'm gonna pop this one off. As you can see, it's not ventilating. As soon as, 
Yep. So it's going to feel the patient trigger. Thank you. So I don't have to tell the ventilator to start ventilating. Some vets you have to actually say start. This one is going to feel us put the patient on it and start ventilating. And now you can see already my alarms are popping up here. And you see the color change. So red versus yellow is um, the severity of the alarm. So, and any time the alarm goes off, you can press it and it can give you more information about what's going on specifically with that each different alarm. And like Kelsey said, um, you know, based on the patient and what they're doing, sometimes we have a conversation about adjusting the alarms, but there are some alarms that we cannot turn off just for the patient's safety. Um, so now I've had a few alarms go off. So then you can see here, I can see everything that's gone off um, and what time. So if you're not sure, no problem. We can pull that up and see what's going on. And then I just want to hit close. And then I just want to, so you can audibly hear what the alarms are going to sound like. one of our favorite buttons. <laughs> See how it's still yellow? It's gonna... But when you hear that alarm, that louder one, and you see red, that's when you're like, okay, I need to go check on this baby. We need to troubleshoot, see what's going on. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go check on this baby. We need to troubleshoot, see what's going on. So, alarm silence button. <laughs> okay, this is a great button. It's gonna silence for two minutes. Um, the other thing is, you heard how loud it was, so that said it test. So for our purposes today, I'm going to go ahead and turn it down to one, <laughs> so it's not so loud. Do you want to talk about monitor values on top? Yeah, I want to show, just going back real quickly, we talked about BC Plus and how um, they can determine the flow. It's important when we're looking at this, so this is how I know it's ACBC Plus, but I want you to see what it looks like if it's just ACBC. So it's such a small difference, but just knowing the difference of what it looks like and being sure that your patient's on the correct mode. And ACBC Plus, just since the baby can manipulate their own flow rate, it is a more comfortable mode of ventilation. So that's the difference in what it looks like. Okay, so um, like she said, everything is what we have here is everything we have set. This is everything that the baby is actually doing. So we start with peak pressure. So this is where we're worried about too much pressure, where the baby could possibly have a pneumo. Maybe they need to be suctioned. Maybe they're coughing. We talked about the condensation in the tube. Um, we have our minute ventilation. This FTOT, that's total frequency. That's just the respiratory rate. If you're not sure what um, any of these are, you can press them and it's going to tell you total respiratory rate. And if you want even more detail, there's a little more button and you can read more about it. We have our I to E, so inhalation, exhalation. The peep of what the patient's doing, airway pressure. Um, so we're looking at this tidal volume based on what's set and what the patient's actually doing. And if we press this, then we can see this is what is exhaled. And it is a little hard in this scenario because obviously we have the tidal volume set to be delivered at 6, but we're receiving um, less than half of that. Why um, do you think that is happening? Because we have this itty bitty lung, right? This lung is probably a tight lung. It probably mm -hmm. is not very compliant. No. <laughs> um, it's surfactant deficient. Yes. <laughs> very well could be, yes. So those are things that things that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, we know that this baby's on full support because we look here where you know they're on ECBC. Additionally, we're looking up here. It says C. That means a controlled mode. Okay. Um, can you tell right now if the baby is taking or initiating any breaths? So we're set at a rate of 40, and the baby's breathing 40. So then, if the baby starts breathing, all of a sudden you just decrease sedation. You can see their respiratory rate has now increased. You can also see, over here, this has gone from a C to an A. The A means it's an assisted breath. Saturating. 
all of a sudden. And it's, like I know there's a difference between um, a solid desaturation or sometimes maybe you let them write it out because you don't want to be chasing them. If you do decide you want to go ahead and give them more oxygen, we have this 100%. It's not a 100% oxygen. It's, it's an oxygen increase button. So it's going to increase 20% mm -hmm. above what was actually set. So we were set to 40% and now you can see it only went to 60. So that's important to know if your baby really does need 100%, instead of pushing that button, you're going to press this, and I want you to come touch it so you can feel it. Oh. So you manually touch this here and bring it to 100%. But make sure you hit the accept button. If you do not, if you're like, okay, we're at 100%, and we hit cancel or out of this, we go here, it is not going to take it. So you have to, you need to make sure that when you touch your FIO2 and you go to 100, you hit the accept button. So that's the difference. So I go ahead and come and touch it and see what it feels like. So it's quick, I'm actually going to have second, mm -hmm. sorry. I'm just going to stop this so you can see what it actually looks like. So if you wanted to take it back down to 50%. they've recovered in time. And you, yep. If you're having to continuously press this button, we need to let the physician know, maybe we need a chest x-ray, do they need to fact, and what's the reasoning, why are their oxygen needs increasing? Mm -hmm. So the physician puts the orders in for what they want the ventilator set up. Sometimes the physicians will come and change things on their own, um, or they'll ask the nurses to change it. I know. <laughs> Um, so in that case, we just ask if you can give RT a call if the physician does make a change so that we can document it at the proper time and also know what's happening with the baby. Or on the flip side, if they say, oh, I want to increase the rate from 40 to 45, please give RT a call um, just so we can go ahead and come and make that change. Mainly for nursing, you guys, you may um, increase your FiO2, right, the oxygenation. Um, you've got your silence, and then you've got your oxygen increase button as well. And then I, if you're done with this aspect, I can go ahead and touch on the yeah. heater a little bit. Yeah. Um, so with the heater, we're going to have it turned on. We're going to have it set. There's two different settings. There's invasive and non-invasive. Non-invasive is 31 degrees. Uh, invasive is 37. So we're going to go ahead and go to that 37. Um, and just so you know, we're always going to have a water bag uh, that's going to be hanging from our little arm here. Uh, just as when we have, when anyone is um, intubated, we're bypassing their natural way of heating and humidifying air. So that is why we heat and humidify the air that's going to be delivered to them. Um, so we'll try and have that bag always sitting there and one on the back of the ventilator just in case when it needs to be replaced. Um, yes, alarms will happen. <laughs> that being said, when you do get an alarm, it's really nice. There's a little diagram right here that shows you the heater and it will light up where the problem is at. So sometimes one of these little wires can come a little dislodged. So now it's telling me exactly where the problem is at. So I'm like, okay. So I can come in and be like, oh. I just needed to plug that part back in. More often than not, the chamber itself gets dry. Just need more water. Um, every once in a while, something will become dislodged. And you're like, oh my goodness, we are not ventilating. What is going on? First, we're going to take the baby off and start bagging. Then, probably call our team and be like, we lost ventilation. I'm not sure what happened. Always just trace your circuit, though. Trace it back and be like, oh my goodness, I see that this just popped out. Unfortunately, this one did not light up for us. So, we'll just plug it back in. Um, the other thing is, if it's alarming and you're like, RT can't get there right away, baby is doing okay, you've assessed them, their vitals are all okay, we might even just tell you, just turn it off and turn it back on. More often than not, that fixes the problem. But heaters can be a little bit of a nuisance. I hear them in my uh, nightmares. <laughs> those beeping sounds, so, yeah. <laughs> so down in this area are our hard keys, one that you will want to use or you might want to be familiar with. 
is this manual breath. So you can see right now we have a rate set at 40, and the baby is actually receiving a rate of 40. Uh, but in the case that they were weaning down the respiratory rate and they start to go apneic, you just give that manual breath. So just push that. So if there's an instance where you need to take your baby off of the ventilator, um, there is a way to not completely shut off the ventilator, but then if you're coming back, it will resume their current settings. So you're going to click on the menu here, you'll see the button says standby, you'll click standby, you'll disconnect the baby, and you'll hit confirm. Maybe you're off doing things with the little baby, and you come back 10 minutes later, and you're like, okay, we're ready to go back on the ventilator. You simply just reconnect them, it will detect their their breath, and ventilation will resume. Along with some alarms. <laughs>